frankly, we have, that's, to me, the vice president, you know, that's a very important choice. Not totally. only in terms of election, but in terms of once you get there, you have to have the right person. But I think it's a very, very important choice. Yes, it is. And of course, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So looking ahead, people are saying Trump's running hot right now, but it's a long race. It's over a year to go. But you're engaged in this in this campaign every second, every day. No one knows how you get the energy for it. God bless you. But they're saying that you're going to you're going to peak. You're going to drop out. How the heck do you maintain your stamina, Donald? Is there a secret? Well, maybe it's good uh, genes. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm energized, and I've been that way for my life, and it's mostly because I enjoy what I do, and I see a lot of progress. You know, maybe if I were number 17 in the polls or number 15 in the polls, or, you know, some of these guys have actually zero. That means out of thousands of people that are polled, they have nobody said, you know, they'd vote for them. And at some point, well, they're going to start dropping out. And maybe if I were number 15, I wouldn't feel so uh, so much stamina, but... It's nice to be number one, and, and really number one by a lot. So uh, we'll see. You are by a huge margin. You've struck a, a chord. People are trying to explain it. The very people who attacked you in the beginning are now suddenly coming around saying, well, maybe he's not so bad because they're hedging their bets that you just might win. I feel you will win if you sustain it. And the only thing I ask out of this support for you is simple. I only want to run the NIH, and I want to clean up the science and medical establishments in America, which are as corrupt as you can imagine. They're doing no basic science. Medicine has been corrupted by politics. Instead of producing scientific reports, everything has to have something about global warming in it or gender identity. True. We have I mean, a yeah. problem at every every level of this country has a problem, and it wasn't started by, by Obama, but I hope it's ended by Donald Trump. Well, you're going to see a lot of things happen. If I win, you're going to see a lot of things happen. And, you know, my theme is make America great again. That's what's going to happen, Michael. Donald, you probably have another show to go to, but do you want to spend five more minutes with me after this commercial break, or you have to run along? Well, how long is your break, Mike? It's too late. <laughs> okay. How long is your break? You could, you, know pro you, could, you could probably appear on Telemundo during the break. Time, and I'd much rather do it the next time, because I'm not another show, but I have people coming in, and... They are. It's a whole big group of people. No, no, that's okay. You don't have to explain. I'm very happy to have had you on for 15 minutes. See you in mar lago this winter, I hope. Very good. I hope. Thanks, I love Donald. God bless you. Good luck. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Well, you know, if you've listened to my show for any length of time, you know all of the different uh, moods that I have and such. I was elated to have Donald Trump on, not so much because he's a ratings getter. You know, that's that's intermittent here and there in radio. It doesn't really matter over a long period of time. It's because we finally have a straight talker running for office. All the rest are carefully scripted. They read scripts that are written for them. I asked Donald straight up questions. He didn't. By the way, his team did not ask me for questions in advance. Just have to take my word for it. Did you notice his answers? They were straight up. The man understands things. He understands many things, especially business, which I cannot say for uh, other individuals, such as Barack Obama, who has never sold, so far as I know, shave ice on the streets of Honolulu. Barack Obama has no business experience, no knowledge of business. But the other Republicans, I mean, you look at the, the field, for God's sakes. So we had a great interview. It was as good as any. We're going to put it on michaelsavage.com. We talked about tariffs. We talked about uh, what he would do against ISIS. I forget what else we touched on. And uh, he'll be back. And he's in for the long haul. And I think he's going to win unless the Republicans undermine him further, which they're going to try to do. And we must stop them from doing. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Hey, welcome to The Savage Nation. We live in such depressing times that when you hear an optimist like Donald Trump, it lifts your spirits. I mean, listen to what I just said to you. The others are so depressing to listen to. And I hear the standard attacks on Donald Trump. You're going to hear him now because I'm opening the lines up to people calling about the interview. If you missed my interview with Donald, it'll be up on the website, michaelsavage.com, right after the show. And uh, you'll hear for yourself. Now, standard operating procedure is to say this and that about Trump. And I hear the same repeated lies over and over again. And I'm a champion of Trump. I'll be very honest with you. I like the man. I've only met him a few times personally. Full disclosure, I'm a member of the Mar-a-Lago country club that he owns in Florida, but I don't go there. I go to Florida about a week a year. I go to the club about once a year, twice a year. That's about it. And when he's there, I say hello. He says hello. There's not, nothing else between us, nothing else at all. I just know that he could turn this country around. I've been in the business long enough to know that it takes charisma as well as ideas to change the course of a nation. Look at what this charismatic left-wing fanatic has done to this country and the world. And look at what this charismatic left-wing phony Obama is about to do to the world by giving Iran a bomb. Take a look at what's going to happen. So, you know, my next big book is called Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. And I hope after it comes out and establishes itself as a document in this nation, Trump becomes president the following year, and we can change the title to whoever writes the book, because I'm not writing anymore after that. It'll be a dog book after that, and maybe a book on health. That's about it. I'm through. I've done my job. But I want to go to you, the callers, on the Savage Nation, on the Trump interview, on the lies about global warming, putting out by this, this, this president of ours. Alaskan glaciers, Mr. Obama, have been melting under every president since George Washington. But he didn't learn that in the, in the gutters of Chicago as he ran around with a staple gun as a community organizer. This global warming hype is so overwhelming that someone's got to stand up to him. All right, let's go to the callers. Let's go to BAP in Dallas first. Jackie, welcome. What did you think of Donald Trump? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> You know, my opinion of Donald Trump is not that he's a bad bad person or that he would be necessarily bad for the country. But uh, being from Texas, I know the difference in a straight talker and a very outspoken and opinionated man. And I think his ideas are big and very general in nature, but I don't hear the specifics when it comes to when you question him about tariffs I don't hear the specifics about what that is or what devaluing the currency even means. Well, let me defend Trump because he... See, I've heard this before from people who say he's not specific enough, but I think they're wrong. He was very specific. When I said, would you impose tariffs on China, he went on and on for at least four minutes. When I said, what would you do to stop ISIS? He said, yes, I would bomb their training camps. How much more specific can anyone be? You know, I just, think, I just think there's that's that's not specific. I mean, those are just wait, wait, bombing training camps. Is wait a minute, sir? Dropping bombs on ISIS training camps is very specific. I think what you are espousing is the stuff you're hearing from people in radio who claim to be conservatives, who are trying to pretend that they're not against Trump, but are really trying to undermine Trump to make sure one of their fellow travelers becomes president or gets the nomination. And I think that if you listen to him, he's very specific. Why else do you think he's rising so high in the polls above the other candidates? Because he's talking uh, big. Uh, he's talking ideas, and he's talking big, and he's talking tough. That's why he's being followed. That's why he's got the, the got the polls. I agree with you on what you said. So what's wrong with talking tough in a world when no one on the Republican or conservative side dares say a word against the left wing juggernaut? Uh, I can't say no one. I, I think there's a handful of, of very strong people in this race, you know, that would be great uh, leaders for the country. He didn't I think that they're wonderful people, unelectable. Can you name one of the Republicans who has the charisma of Donald Trump? Well, I wouldn't elect a man based on charisma alone. That's not enough. Well, it I, is enough. 
It is enough. Take a look at what charisma alone has done with Barack Obama. This man is empty as they make them. He's an empty suit with great charisma and a great voice. And look at the damage he's been able to do with his charisma. So the, the thing that we need right now is someone with greater charisma with conservative ideas. Thank you for the call. My opinion. Three facts to counter uh, Barack Obama's Alaska global warming hype from the Climate Change Dispatch, one of the best websites ever invented. Glad he went to Alaska. You want the facts? One, global temperatures have been flat for nearly 19 years. Fact two, polar ice is not dangerously melting. I'll give you the details later. Fact three, extreme weather is declining. Shall I go on? Now, if you really want to know what's happening to our climate, and if you really want to investigate this issue of climate science, would you invest 10 minutes and go to Google and Google Vostok, the Vostok ice core samples? To me, that was the clinching evidence. But that requires work. That requires work. That's, that requires a little reading and thinking. And once you study the Vostok ice core samples, which were extracted from five miles beneath the polar ice caps by a team of international scientists, you'll find out that global warming has ebbed and flowed over the millennia. This is not to argue for pollution. This is not to say we all wouldn't like hydrogen cars and everything running off solar energy. That's, you know, a dream that I had when I was a little boy reading Popular Mechanics. We'd all be flying around little air, uh, air packs behind our back and everything would be powered by the sun and we'd have a clean world. That's a great idea. It's a great vision, but we're not there yet. And if you're interested in real science as opposed to the propaganda being put out by uh, big global warming, Big global warming, one of the greatest threats to humanity I've ever seen. Okay, next topic, tariffs. Pat, WJR, you're on the Savage Nation, 30 seconds or less. Yes, Dr. Savage. Uh, I feel obligated to point out, each and every item brought in from China to this country has an assigned duty. For example, cigarette lighters, um, knives, 10%, flat. 10% every one. 10 cents is 11 cents on every item for more than 30 years. If it's something that we do and produce in this country, such as cotton, okay, uh, gloves, uh, jerseys, underwear, that will be based, the, the tariff on that, if we had a terrific year with our cotton, tariffs will be as high as 25%. If we've had a real low production year, they'll go down to 6 or 8%. But well, my friend, products from the United States that go even to Mexico that are not qualified being tariff-free under the NAFTA rules, do you know that they're subject to Mexico's MFN rates of duty? Are you aware of the tariff table? I know China, and I know the duty. I'm an independent conservative. I'm not against Donald Trump. I'm just No, I understand, but we're having a rational discussion. I'm not attacking you. But are you aware of the tariffs that are put on goods going into Mexico? From from us, you you must you must be in the business of exporting textiles, correct? No, 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 in, importing, importing, oh. and having. If if you were to try and to send yarn made of silk wool cotton into Mexico, you'd pay a ten percent tariff rate. Do you know that? No, for, for for Mexico, I don't know that. I don't do any business with Mexico or ever have. If uh, you were trying to send in knit fabrics, non woven industrial, ten percent. Apparel, they're charging us 20 to 25 percent. If you were to sell Mexico, you want, let's say you're a manufacturer in America making beds, baths, kitchen linens, 15 to 25 percent slapped on it by the Mexican government. You want to sell carpets in Mexico made in America, 15 percent. You want to sell shoes made in America, 30 percent. And why is Mexico putting a 30 percent tariff on shoes? Because they make shoes and they want to put us out of business the same way the Japanese put us out of the electronics business. So, my friend, there's a lot more to it than a single item, and there's a lot more to it than just China. We're being traded to death, not only by China, but by Mexico and every other country. And the reason is simple, is because our politicians are nothing but glorified prostitutes. And whoever can reach them with a, pay, a payoff in the form of a campaign contribution gets what they want. And America's interests are never, ever, ever put first. America first, my friends. Never forget that. And that's why Donald is hated. Because these professional prostitutes called politicians 
have been raking in the millions and millions of dollars in contributions from all of these foreign entities and interests, and they don't want the money to stop flowing. They'd be out of business. That's the main 